Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back. And I wanted to go ahead and talk about the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Listen, I, I, I was this. Ep, this is the thing about the some of these reality shows that we uh, that we review. Sometimes the show can be good, but I don't think that a sh that sometimes doesn't translate, or some it sometimes doesn't give you enough, or it feels like sometimes it's not enough for me to want to come down here and review like this episode to me was a good episode but i didn't feel like it was review worthy if that makes sense but because we're reviewing the show i'm like i might as well go ahead and just say what i'm gonna say i don't think i'm gonna be that long because it wasn't a lot that really happened this episode um so basically cal has decided to throw a party for anime and they're going somewhere outside of California, outside of Los Angeles. And it was cute or whatever. Um, I don't know why she is on the show. I, 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 I listen, I could go down, I could run down some things of, you know, just things I've seen online or why. I, all I'm going to say, I don't know why Anna Mae is on the show. I honestly don't. She came in episode six or seven. And then she missed like, I think two episodes back to back. It was a couple of episodes. I don't know why they made her a full-time housewife. Like to me, Anime and Crystal could be really friends of the show. They could have gave those, they could have gave those peaches to two other girls, if we're gonna be honest. Crystal serves no purpose. What she's doing is friend of the show T. What anime is doing is friend of the show T. And it's so like tired through and delayed to me that anime has decided to come onto the show and beef with Sutton. It's like so typical. It's kind of like the girls coming coming on to Potomac and girl wanting to beef with Candace. Like, oh girl. <laughs> it's like them coming on to uh Atlanta wanting to beef with Kenya. Like, girl. Like, give me some, girl, come on trying to beef with Erica Jane. You know what I'm saying? Come on beef trying to beef with Garcelle or somebody. But like Sutton, it's like the, it's like the, it's, it's like the, uh... anyway, so they go to the little play, the little city, the little town, whatever, girl. Kyle loves shopping. She says she can pretty much find something to buy anywhere. Um, she doesn't feel connected to Los Angeles anymore. And she said that once Portia graduates, um, she's probably going to move somewhere that basically she enjoys. They showed a picture of her, I think, in Aspen. She said she likes to be outside with her dogs and all that good stuff. So um, they get they, they, they're just like playing a game, asking questions. And one of them was basically, they were talking about uh, like DMs, like your partner, your husband, um, having conversations with women, you know, on Instagram, liking pictures. Kyle said she didn't like it. Um, all I'm going to say is this. I do believe uh, the, the, the grown side of me believes that if you're going to be in a relationship or a marriage, you have to trust your partner. But I also recognize that even I can I, even I can see how even if you feel like you trust your partner, there are things that I feel like a lot of people may not want to admit, but that makes them feel insecure, right? So like I could see it. I could see even if I was in a relationship, how like if I looked up. And my man was liking all types of pictures on Instagram and possibly even having conversations with people on Instagram. How that would make me feel like, even if you think you got you a good man, Savannah, you'll still be like, um, like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I can see how Cal could be like, she don't like when, you know, and then she says that girl and I'm, listen, we've all done some things. I've done some things that I'm not proud of, right? I've done I've done some people <laughs> that I didn't have no business doing. Okay, that was back in my younger days when I didn't when I didn't when I didn't care. Okay, that was a young trollop. Okay, 
<clears throat> but I will say this much. It's one thing to like, okay, I'm, I'm going to say this, I'm going to move on. It's one thing to have sex with a married person and you going by your business. You know, you might go to the club, meet somebody who married, have sex with him. You're like, I don't care. It, it, it does feel a little bit like you low-key need your ass whooped. Cal was basically saying how like women, like the women are the aggressors in the situation. Like they come after Mauricio. It's like, girl, you like... Yes, I believe that, you know, you know you're married, you ain't got no business cheating on your wife or your husband or whatever. But I'm just talking about just the simple fact that there are a group of people out there. Shout out to y'all if you're watching this video. But there are a group of people out there, you know, like this person is married. You know this person is married. And you still will like go into their DMs and try and shoot your shot. Like that is like a whole nother level type of trifling. And I could see how somebody would, could, could want to whoop your ass for that. Now, it's up to the person who's married to entertain the conversation. But I'm just saying just a simple fact that there are a group of women out there in men, but we're talking about women right now, who will know a person is married and you will still go in this person's DM like, that's a whole nother level of bitch, I'll whoop your ass. <laughs> right? Anyways. Um, would you date a woman? Kyle says, yes. <laughs> girl, Kyle, what is you what is you gonna come out and tell us that girl, you over there bumping cats with uh Miss Morgan? <clears throat> girl, so Dorit, they still talk about scissoring, girl. Shout out to the girls who do a little who, who, who went to a little scissor action every now and again. Hello, <laughs> girl. Shout out to the girls. Who likes to just do a little bump and grind? Okay, yes. Shout out to the girls who bump and grind. Okay, girl, when Kyle and Dorit got on that grass and girl put their legs between each other and started bumping cats, I said, "Yes, sir. I said, "Y'all better bump cats on the grass." Anyways, um, Garcelle and her sons. Um, you know, sometimes I do feel when it comes to the kids. Some I know that this is a reality show. Don't get it twisted. But I do sometimes cringe when I see certain conversations being had with these kids that could embarrass them. Like, I remember one time Dr. Heavenly on Married to Medicine had asked Alora, her daughter, um, like something about, I think about her period or something. And they were on the phone and Laura, Alora hung up the phone in her face. I got it because it's like, girl, don't be asking me about my period on this camera. So it's kind of like, it makes me cringe sometimes. <clears throat> so I get that these conversations and this is real and all that stuff. But Garcelle basically, basically, so Garcelle is at home, the sons come home. And girl, she was in the kitchen cooking. One of the little boys got, got a bowl of cereal. I said, ooh, girl, I would've threw that guy, would've got that cereal and threw it in the trash can. Um, but he said he was hungry, he needed a snack. You know, and they, I didn't know they was that tall. They're like six foot two, six foot three. So they probably eat a lot anyways. Um. And somehow the conversation goes towards sex. <laughs> now, I don't know if y'all caught it, but one of the little boys, the one who want to move with the daddy, the one who ain't got the girlfriend, you heard him tell on the brother and say that basically he having sex with his girlfriend. Well, he didn't say the girlfriend, but he just said, you need to talk to him. He's the one who's doing it. I said, oh. I mean, girl, that, that girl, they 15, 16. I expect them to be, not expect, but it's not out the norm. For people to be having sex. Y'all know. Y'all was fucking at 14 and 15 and 16. Y'all know 12 and 13. Okay. Um, not me. <laughs> okay. That was y'all. <laughs> hey. Um, so basically, one of the look the, the twin who has a girlfriend, he had he's having sex. Um, the brother told. Um, I just hope they're using a condom. Um, she tells him again, no means no, all the good stuff, right? <sighs> I know the little boy is a little boy. And I know that I've given him a lot about, I do think he's a great communicator, especially for his age. But it, I, I did kind of, 
So Garcelle was basically talking about how she is thinking about the boys leaving for college. They don't have that much longer to be home because they're in 10th grade, um, which they really don't. They only got two more years. Um, and basically, she's going to be an empty nester, basically. And one of the boys was like, um, what did he say? I th oh, she said, you don't seem to care. And he was like, I don't. <laughs> Girl, like, it almost came across as a tad bit mean. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get that they're 15 or 16, however old they are. 14, I don't know how, 14, 15, 16, I don't know. Girl, I, I get that they're young boys, right? And sometimes we could all be a little, you know, a little slick by the tongue. But I just felt like it was a little mean that your mother is telling you, like, oh, I'm going to miss you. And he, she's like, you seem like you don't care. And you're like, no, no. <laughs> like, ugh. Like, it's like, girl, we get it. You are somewhat mature for your age. You can have, you're a great communicator. But don't get it twisted. Like, you ain't you ain't that goddamn girl. Nigga, you don't even know how to pump gas. If we're gonna be honest about it, you needed instructions how to pump, needed instructions on how to pump gas. So I need you to just slow your roll just for a little bit. Okay. Anyways, PK and Dory, they have a therapist come over. And This is what I got from the conversation, okay? Dorit is struggling with her PTSD. And PK doesn't believe that he does, he wants to know, girl, basically like, how do I know <laughs> what is like when she's going through something that's a result of the PTSD and when she's just being a bitch, basically. He says that Dorit, um, in the confessional, he said that Dorit doesn't like to be wrong, right? She doesn't, I guess, want to acknowledge when, she, when she's wrong, which brings me to, that's probably part of the reason, not all of the reason, but that's part of the reason why there's going to continue to be a disconnect, especially between her and Garcelle. Because like I've said on Twitter, Dorit doesn't want to acknowledge or believe that what people think about her or the experience that folks have with her could be a reality. PK says that when he first met Dorit, she wasn't as high maintenance as she is now. I've, I've seen flashback clips of Dorit and Dorit from the clips that I saw when I guess when she first joined the show, Dorit gave me very much a girl from Alabama who shops at girl Charlotte Roos, a guy she fell for 21. That's what I got. Comparison to Dorit now, who probably stays at the Gucci and Chanel store. When I first met her, she wasn't this high maintenance. She wasn't swiping my card every chance she got. Now, every time I look up, girl, I'm saying transactions from the Chanel store, the Gucci store, and Tom Ford. Um, I don't think PK is having a hard time, basically. He also felt like he basically didn't feel appreciated, right? PK basically is saying, I'm trying to do something nice for you for our anniversary. And pretty much the whole time you're complaining. You're complaining is this, is that. And so it makes me not want to do anything else. It makes me not want to try and get, try to surprise you. If it's going to be na -na 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 the whole time. You know, I don't think, though, you know, you know, I think that robbery was fake. I'm going I'm to keep saying I don't believe it. I don't believe it. It just it, the whole situation was iffy to me from the get go, the whole situation. But let's just say Dorit got, got robbed. <laughs> I could see Dorit going through things. PK is having a hard time of, of again. Like, when do I know, like, is this a part of what you're going through today? Are you just being obnox obnoxious or is it because, girl, you're really going through something? They're going to have to figure it out. 
but I thought I thought it was an interesting conversation to see them have and PK say the things that he was saying about his wife, especially about her not ever wanting to be wrong. And it and it and it made me think about her relationship with Garcelle and you know how Dorit really doesn't want to acknowledge that she could be wrong in a situation. Girl, your husband is saying this. Girl, your husband is saying this, right? And how basically your ass is too high maintenance and you running his goddamn money into the ground. <laughs> um, the celebration of life that Kyle had for her uh, best friend, it was really nice. It was sad, but it was a real nice celebration. I thought it was. Um, I'm going to be honest with y'all, even though we know that Dor we know that M M Mauricio and Cal were not together at this point. Me, my, my, I really believe that Mauricio and Cal, this is what I believe. I believe that Mauricio and Cal were not together, but they were just acting it out for the show. That's what I believe. Um, I think that, I think that Cal now has met Morgan and she's, and she's in a relationship with Morgan. And she really does. She's really not depending on Mauricio that much. Even, I just, <clears throat> excuse me. I still feel like it was low key fucked up for Mauricio not to be there. I do. Like, girl, y'all been married a long time. Y'all have a lot of kids. This is someone who has been a part of this woman's. I don't know why I'm about to cry. This was. This has been. Um, I found myself about to cry, girl. Um, that this woman who was a part of Kyle's life was a part of Kyle's life since they were little girls. You know what I'm saying? And I just felt like it was a tad bit disrespectful for I know Mo, they say he has some business to take care of, work, but it's like, girl, out of all the times that you needed to be there just to support someone that even if you're not in a relationship with them, even if you know your marriage is over. Like you still should be there to support your wife, especially like with what's going on tonight. I just thought it was low-key fucked up. I really did. I really did. Anyways, I'm moving on because girl, that shit is making me sad for whatever reason. I don't know why. Um, Teddy, she comes and <laughs> girl, y'all give Teddy the blue. See, I can't, you know, I didn't start watching until season two. I thought that was, I think that was Teddy's last season. So I didn't care. I don't know anything about Teddy. I, I when I came in, Teddy was pregnant and boring. Shout out to Sutton. Um, but a lot, a lot of the girls, girl, I, I don't see, I don't see people go up for Teddy. And based off what I saw, I didn't get anything from Teddy that made me just like dislike her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the girls do not. I don't think I've seen one person on Twitter, girl, go up for Teddy. Every time I see a comment, it's negative. Like, oh, girl, why is Teddy on the screen? Girl, get Teddy out. Oh, Teddy, oh my God, why Teddy? It's always some of that, right? So I guess Garcelle, Garce not I guess, Garcelle had made a comment about, Nettie, uh, about Teddy like being a gnat. And when she uh, came up to Garcelle at the Celebration of Life, um, she referred to herself as a gnat. <laughs> and I was like, girl, that's so weird. Like, and girl, they showed it. They showed it back in 2020. Like, girl, we're almost in 2024. Girl, I'm, this was shot in 2023. And girl, you you're still bothered by the fact that Giselle called you a gnat. <laughs> Teddy gone, girl. That's why the girls don't like you, Teddy. Um, Annabella, she's talking to Crystal and Garcelle, and she's talking about Sutton and her throat, girl. <laughs> and Garcelle asks her, girl, why, like, basically, why does that bother you? Like, girl, why are you on Sutton and what's going on with her throat? <laughs> girl, why? And she says something about she's a health professional. I don't know. Like, girl, she just wants to fight. And she feels like I have to fight with somebody, of course. So who can I fight with? Let me fight with Sutton. Garcelle goes and tells Sutton. And I looked at Garcelle sideways because it's like, Garcelle, Bitch, we had a celebration of life. If we're not gonna have no drama, like this is the night not to have no drama. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't like that Garcelle went and told Sutton in that moment. Like basically, she figured out that girl Annabella was about to come for Sutton. You could have told her that the next day because this is not the time for no mess. Not tonight. You know what I'm saying? We've been doing this is not tonight. 
This is not the night. Anyways, that was pretty much it. Again, a celebration of life was nice. How I got up and spoke about her best friend. I think the whole situation is sad. I have seen people online talk about how, I guess, when Lisa Vanderpump was going through what she was going through, Cal didn't really show her any type of... She wasn't... My stomach is growling. She really wasn't like a shoulder for Lisa. <coughs> and so there are people online saying they don't feel sorry for Cal. I think it's a little fucked up, a little mean. Um, again, I didn't. I wasn't watching Beverly Hills like that back in the day. Um it's just a sad situation just to know that Cal's best friend, this woman who she's been knowing since she was a little girl, you know, who was pretty much going to be over her money, her kids, every, that goes to show how close she was to this woman that she just up one day and just took her life. Like, it's just a sad situation to think about. I know that has to hurt Cal and everybody in her family. And I'm talking about the um, her best friend's family. And then Cal and the mama was hugging and crying. It was just a sad, sad thing. Anyways, I'm about to go because this is getting sad. Um, all right, y'all. I'm going to talk to y'all later. Bye, y'all.